Hello and welcome to the 19th episode of Fresh Off the Reel. My name is Lib. And my name is Vengeance. What does that mean? I am Vengeance. I am the knight. I am a podcast co-host. Oh, you admit it. You're the co-host. You're also the co-host. <laughs> we are co-hosts together. <laughs> In this podcast called Fresh Off the Reel, episode 19, Batman Begins. <laughs> In this movie, Batman Begins. <laughs> yep, and that's the end of the show. Because he does indeed begin in this movie. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Uh, it... <laughs> so, but, yeah, okay. Let's, let's do this. So, Batman Begins uh, is the first of three Christopher Nolan Batman movies that many fans say is the best of Batman. Yeah, I would have to agree. I, I think of the live-action Batman appearances, uh, I, I'm extremely biased towards uh, Michael Keaton, the, the 89 Batman. But uh, in terms of just sheer quality, this trilogy is by far the best Batman representation, I think, as we've ever seen on film. I'm hoping Robert Pattinson's Batman uh, tops these, but I'm a little skeptical, especially with The Dark Knight. I think all three of these movies are some of the best superhero movies ever made. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, uh, this is really good. I, I like this one a lot. We're, we're doing Batman Begins in anticipation for The Batman, which is coming out March 3rd. So we're all really excited for that. So in anticipation, we're going to be reviewing all three Christopher Nolan Batman movies because it, they're not connected to The Batman. It's just, you know, they're good movies. Of of the Batman movies, aside from 89, I think these are going to be the most fun to talk about. I think these are generally considered everybody's favorites, and I just don't want to talk about the DCEU if I don't have to. So we're doing these ones instead of Batman v <laughs> Superman. Just to get a little, little movie history out of the way. A little, little Hollywood history. Batman history. So this movie came out in 2005. The, the previous Batman movie to come out before this one was a little flick that everybody hates called Batman and Robin in 1997. Now, 1997 to 2005 is a pretty big leap for superhero movies, especially nowadays where we get like 10 a year. <laughs> and there's a good reason for that. You see, Batman and Robin sucks. <laughs> but Batman and Robin was so bad that it killed superhero movies in Hollywood for years. Between Batman Begins and um, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, we basically didn't get any superhero movies because the audiences hated these that much that no one wanted to go see more. A little, a little flick that I've talked about a lot in this podcast, um, a Spider-Man 1 by Sam Raimi, saved the genre. But it didn't save Batman because Batman still went three more years without, without a Hollywood appearance at all, which is weird, right? Like, when you think about Batman now, he's, he's in so many movies, he's in so much of pop culture. But he went, he went a long time without a movie appearance. Eight years. That's, that's a long time. But uh, he came back with a banger. This, this movie is real good. Yeah, and I never saw it until this week. That goes for all the Batman movies. I haven't seen any of them except for Batman, the Tim Burton one, the one that's just called Batman, where Jack Nicholson is the Joker, and that one's pretty good. It, that one is really good. I think Batman Returns is also pretty good. Batman Forever is, is like, that, that's a different discussion, and we don't talk about Batman and Robin if we don't have to. <laughs> uh, fun fact, as a joke in high school, I, I took my DVD copy of this movie and I broke it. Cracked it in half. Why? Uh, because I watched AVGN do that to an NES cartridge, and I thought it was funny. So I did that to my Batman and Robin copy. <laughs> Do you still have it? No. <laughs> it's in the garbage. <laughs> it's in the garbage, like, 15 years ago. Damn. That would have been funny. That was a thing that happened. That sounds like a thing that happened. And I never replaced that copy. I should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> With the Blu-ray, because I'm a whore. Hmm. Birthday gift idea. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the the Batman begins. Uh, yeah, so let's talk cinema. Uh, Pat, why don't you read the synopsis? Because you have it up. Yep, I'm reading the Google synopsis. We usually read the letterbox one, but the Google one is much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, a young Bruce Wayne travels to the Far East, where he's trained in the martial arts by Henry Ducard, played by Liam Neeson, a member of the Mysterious League of Shadows. When Ducard reveals the League's true purpose, the complete destruction of Gotham City, Wayne returns to Gotham, intent on cleaning up the city without resorting to murder. And with the help of his, of his butler Alfred and Lucius Fox, a tech expert at Wayne Enterprises, Batman is born. 
Th this description Ooh. really should have said Batman Begins, but anyway. Yeah, ba Batman began in this movie because it's a reboot. Yep, this is a, a the first of many <laughs> Batman reboots. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I, I just realized uh, Batman Begins is quite comparable to Casino Royale in that they are both reboots of series that had long-lasting continuities. Yep, and they came out at around the same time. They have a pretty similar tone. Yeah, I think Casino Royale is a good comparison point. Yeah. L look look at us talking about Bond. Look, look at us. Couple of cards. <laughs> a couple of cards at a casino. A couple a aces of my sleeve, maybe? Is this casino in Gotham City, maybe? Should we review <laughs> Casino Royale with how much we talk about it? <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, but today we're talking about Batman Begins. So, but like we said earlier, Batman Begins is directed by Christopher Nolan. I think I think everyone knows him for Inception, uh, as you should, because Inception's great. Yeah, and last episode, uh, we briefly mentioned a Christopher Nolan film, Tenet, which was recommended to me. And I quite liked it. Tenet is his most recent movie. The, Batman Begins, and I should say the whole Dark Knight trilogy is very um, different than his usual shtick. These trilogies very by the numbers superhero storytelling. Like, like it, it has Nolan's charm. But it's not like a weird psychedelic fuck, uh, fuck mind fuck of a movie like his other stuff. Hey, Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan's thing is fucking with you. This movie doesn't really fuck with you. Yeah, this is just a Batman story. It's a damn good Batman story, but it, it, it's not a mind fuckery. But I will say that this movie could have fucked with you if uh, Scarecrow was done a different way. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. But yeah, we we this, we got a, a pretty. A, killer cast we have christian bale as bruce wayne Ooh. Uh, everyone has loved seen and loved american psycho we have michael kane my boy as alfred sir michael kane sir michael I, kane. as I'm, we discussed the last episode <laughs> i am sorry for disrespecting him we have uh, katie holmes as rachel only in this movie because she's recast <laughs> in the next one <laughs> but katie holmes is a big name uh, we got uh, liam neeson as henry ducard or um Ra's al ghul I'll probably be uh, flip-flopping between calling him Roz and Raish. Uh, this movie is at fault for why everyone does that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, we have the boy, the man himself, uh, Gary Oldman as Jim Gordon, who I love. We got Morgan Freeman. We got Ken Watanabe. This killer cast. This movie is full of huge talent. We have Cillian Murphy. Uh, this is great. This movie's cast is great. The performances in this movie are fantastic, I have to say. This has a crazy cast. And they, they all, I, yeah, I think they all do great jobs. The fact that they maintain this, like, killer all-star cast and, and, and quality for three movies is, is crazy, because that usually doesn't happen. Usually this, they fall off. But I think the cast get, like, better and better over time. And they get, like, a bigger with talent over time, you know? Yeah, we got, we got Tom Hardy in the third one. Like, we got um, Heath Ledger in the second one. Like, these casts get so good. We forgot to, I forgot to, uh... Say our ratings for, for the movie. Oh, yes. I gave it three stars. That, that, that seems low, but it's not. Okay. <laughs> uh, six, six, isn't low. six is above average, I'd say. I, I think we say this every time <laughs> we talk about three star ratings, but we just need to get that out of the way because a lot of people think that when you give a movie three out of five, it means it's not good. When you give a video game three out of five, it means it's not good. That, that's not what that means. It means it's above average average is two and a half because that's that's smack in the middle you know generally six a six and above or three and above i liked it i enjoyed it yeah i i i enjoyed this movie two and a half to a five like i i i, I kind of liked it but like it wasn't great and then like two to one and a half that's when we started having problems yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh i gave this movie a a four out of five from this movie is weird i was talking with Lib about it uh, off camera but uh, depending on my mood and depending on how i feel watching them this becomes my favorite or my least favorite of the trilogy <laughs> uh so it's either and that, that's just to say like the other two are really good and uh, this movie is also really good but for me it flip-flops between being a, a three and a half a four and a four and a half it really depends because i think this this movie especially like in film is the definitive batman origin story um, I don't think any of the other movies, including the the Keaton one that I love, um, gets close in terms of like adapting this story. I I think 
uh, Bale's portrayal of Batman is fantastic, especially here. I think he nails the Batman voice the best in this one. Um, I love the suit in this one. I think the suit is my favorite of the three. <laughs> uh, stiff neck and all, but we'll talk about that later. Oh yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, I think just as a Batman portrayal, this is just the best. But The Dark Knight is cinema, and um, despite my issues with The Dark Knight Rises, uh, I think it has some pretty damn great moments, and I love that movie's ending. So, like, it flip-flops for me between these three, but uh, I love them all. Within the next two episodes, we're going to be doing uh, The Dark Knight, and then after that, we're going to be doing Dark Knight Rises. So, stay tuned to hear our uh, our thoughts on that. And then after, we're going to do The Batman. Super excited for that. The Batman is going to be on HBO Max, I believe, a month or, like, 40 days after its theatrical run. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be seeing it in theaters. So, whatever episode we're doing after i see the batman i'll talk about it briefly then well yeah i actually uh um i don't want to get people's hopes up uh by accident but i hear covid restrictions are lifting after march so we'll see i might be able to watch it in theaters maybe but if you're if you aren't i will be i'll have something to say and regardless of if covid restrictions are lifted and he's able to see it or not in theaters and we will be covering the Batman at some point. It's supposed to go on demand like soon after its theatrical run. Yeah. So that being said, if we do if we do both end up watching in theaters, we're gonna record the episode earlier. Yeah. But enough enough of movies that are not Batman begins. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, one more one more thing about movies that aren't Batman begins and something to date the podcast a little bit. So at the time of recording, uh, tickets went on sale yesterday. Oh yeah. For the Batman. And I got my tickets. Oh, you already got it? <laughs> I'm ready. Yes, sir. Hell yes. I am ready to watch the Battinson. Catch catch Pat at a at a theater in Montreal. <laughs> yeah, if if you happen to be at a, that very specific theater, I'm not gonna name in Montreal. <laughs> you might see, see me him. there. I'll cosplay as Thomas Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's do this. So, uh, I, you, I'm sure you could already tell that this is a, a Pat episode. <laughs> yep, I, I'm so I'm a huge Batman fan. Aside from, like, Spider-Man, I think Batman's probably my second favorite superhero. I'm very clueless with Batman. I've only... Of of the of what I know, my information for Batman is Arkham Asylum, not the other three games, uh, and the Lego Batman games. That's it. Oh, and the Tim Burton movie, and now this. So... Yeah, the Tim Burton movie is... is um, the first Tim Burton movie. Yeah, yeah. The, the 89. is a kind of a weird adaptation, because uh, Batman kills people in it. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a different era. That was the eighties. You know? Oh wait, and also, also a uh, a an obscure DVD that I still have called Scooby Doo Meets Batman that I used to love as a kid. I love that movie. I love that. I, love that movie. I watched uh, Batman BT MNT last year or no, two years ago. Was <laughs> and that movie's actually like amazing. Like, unironically, Batman versus TMNT is amazing. I've never heard of this. I okay, look one, day, one day, like off camera, and one day I'm gonna show it to you because it's so good. Uh, Batman says it's pizza time, and and then they, the turtles say cowabunga, and it's amazing. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing! Yeah. I just looked it up, and I, I, and I think Kevin Conroy voices Batman in it, so it's even better. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, so like uh, I've said several times at this point, Batman Begins is a a reboot. It is the classic origin story. It's the first time we've seen it since the '80s. At this point. Nowadays, everyone's kind of tired of seeing Thomas and Martha Wayne be shot in that alley. But in 2005, this was the first time we had seen it since 89. And it was the first time that era of Hollywood saw it at all. Th this movie really brought Batman back into the forefront. Because because of Batman and Robin's failure, and just like a Marvel kind of owning the scene for those first couple of years, Batman kind of got forgotten. And, and this was everyone's reintroduction with Nolan. Um, I also for Nolan as a dark hero, like don't get me wrong, Nolan was a, a a big name at the time, but Batman Begins and like this trilogy, really like brought him out of like the outside that niche movie goer, that that niche uh, film buff scene. Not like these movies really made Christopher Nolan a like a, a household name. At least I believe so. Yeah, I think before this, the, there were only a couple uh, Nolan films. There was Memento and Insomnia before Batman Begins. Yeah, Memento is fantastic. I love Memento. Yeah. 
But it, Memento is a niche like film buff movie. I don't think it's a general audience kind of movie. So and Batman Begins was that first like big uh, general audience movie. It's a lot like Raimi Spider Man One, where like Raimi made you know, the Evil Dead movies and stuff before Spider Man, but Spider Man was that first like household name movie he made. Right. That really put him on uh, put him on the map. Um, this was Nolan's version of that. So like, we're introduced to this interpretation of the character. We start off with um, Bruce going on this journey, learning martial arts, and then we're just we're thrown into his his origin story that everyone has everyone has seen. Even if you don't have a Batman fan, even if you don't know Batman, you know what happens to Thomas and Martha Wayne. It's referenced everywhere. It's referenced constantly. It's been readapted constantly. And um, I have the opinion that we never have to see Thomas and Martha Wayne be shot again. <laughs> like I think everyone knows. <laughs> so like it's gonna happen in the Batman, like for sure. But uh, we don't need to. I, I think this death has been done to death. Uh, but I have to say, I really like um, Thomas and Martha in this movie. Um, unlike um, especially Batman v Superman, where all we see is their death in a flashback. But even like the older movies, um, we don't really get to see Thomas and Martha as characters. They're just motivation for for Bruce to put on the cowl. And this one, we actually get to spend some time with with Thomas. Thomas specifically. We don't see Martha too much, but we get to see Thomas and Bruce as a child interact a lot. Then we kind of get to know him and we get to know how his mind works. And, and like, he's not around much because he dies early in the movie, but they do kind of get you to, to care about him, at least a little, um, before he's eventually shot in that alley. And it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I, you, we don't, you don't get that often, even in animated stuff or the comics. N- nowadays, that death has been like, completely re-text- re-purposed. Um, it doesn't have that same impact it did in like the 60s and thomas wayne is also like a much bigger character now than he was back then like now he's in flashpoint and, and he's he's batman in some universes and he's interacted with the main universe batman so like it's just weird but this one i think is really really humble it's really down to earth i like it a lot uh what do you have to say about batman <laughs> i've been talking a lot uh, what, what's your opinion on batman's parents Liv? Uh, Thomas was a pretty uh, interesting character. He's like, you know, the textbook rich guy, but he actually has a heart, you know? That's all I have to fucking say. Like, I don't... <laughs> They're not in the movie much, so, like, I guess I'm throwing that on you, right? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have much. I kind of want to play Persona 5 right now. <laughs> you, you can play Joker in Persona 5 soon. <laughs> but first, we have to get to Joker in Batman. Well, that that's that's next week. God yeah. Damn. So so like you know, Bruce's parents are shot, and we move on. Yeah, no, I, I'm just gonna let you talk until uh, I have things to actually say. So, <laughs> damn. Okay. You know what, Pat? You are the host for this episode. <laughs> for this week, I am the host. You are the host. <laughs> so we're we're also introduced to to Rachel in in this scene. You're we're introduced to kid Rachel, but we also get pre Bruce leaving on his journey. Rachel, but she's like the, the groundwork for who we're going to interact with for the rest of the movie. I mentioned this earlier, but um, Rachel is replaced. And then actually she's recast. So we have Katie Holmes here. Um, what do you think about Katie Holmes in this movie? Because you're never going to see her again. I mean, like, uh, uh, trying to ignore the fact that I know she gets recasted, but she was kind of forgettable in here. Like, I, yeah. I, I didn't think she had that big of an impact. I kind of forgot her role. What, What is she? She's like, love interest. She's, uh... But- She's she's love oh yeah she's love interest but she's also the um, assistant DEA I think that's what that's called oh right yes she's a, she's a lawyer she's a lawyer for the city yeah okay yeah yeah she she's yeah. daredevil <laughs> no 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 like, look, daredevil's a defense attorney uh, she's like the guys daredevil fights against in court the prosecution sure yes <laughs> okay she's the city's lawyer. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's... And she's also, like, Bruce's anchor to his, like, old life or his humanity, I guess. Because, like, the whole the whole thing with Batman is, like, you know, like, who's the mask? Is it Bruce Wayne or is it Batman? And there's many different interpretations of that. Um, no one can seem to agree, and I'm not going to put my two cents into it because I don't want to start a war. <laughs> but uh, she she's supposed to act like that anchor to his humanity. Right. And I think she's boring as fuck. <laughs> like I, I don't, I don't like her. I didn't, I didn't like her very much either. 
and I might be a little biased because uh, she's recast by um, Maggie Gyllenhaal in, in the next one, and she's much better. <laughs> any wait, were any relation to Jake Gyllenhaal? I I, I think so. They like her sister. Let's or something? Let's, <laughs> let's fact check. Hold on. Let's fact check. Maggie Gyllenhaal. She, that's she is his sister. Yeah, she's his sister. Holy shit! Nice. Mysterio and Rachel are siblings. Oh, she was in Donnie Darko. Was she well, who was she? She's a she's a much better. Uh, she was Elizabeth actress, but also also as, as Rachel. Not, not to not to shit on um, Katie Holmes because I think Katie Holmes is a very talented actress, but I don't think she's given that much to do in this movie. She kind of hovers over Bruce like his like his mom, and like waggles her finger at him, <laughs> but otherwise doesn't do much. <laughs> She's kind of a generic love interest, I think. Um, uh, Anne Hathaway in the third one is is a much better love interest, and I'll save who that is for that episode. For for all two people who don't know who Anne Hathaway plays in Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Google search away if you don't know. But yeah, I, I think she works better as a love interest for Bruce, but I also just think those kind of love interests are better for Batman than love interests for Bruce Wayne. If that makes sense. Yeah. I I like I, I like the idea that Batman needs to be grounded and and he has to like have that balance, but but I I don't like the finger waggling, I'm your mom attitude that <laughs> Rachel has in this movie. I'm your mom. <laughs> oh, Bruce, you, you you can't you can't be vengeful. You don't shoot the guy. Is <laughs> <laughs> is like exact dialogue in this movie. Well, speaking of exact dialogue, can we can we talk about uh, where where. Where the he's like, I don't know anything. I swear to God, and he's like, swear to me. Swear to me. <laughs> I, I, lo- I love, I love that scene so much. <laughs> That's such I, a ridiculous I, I, line. It's so it funny. is such a ridiculous line, but it's better in this movie because the bad bad place hasn't been butchered yet. So at least it kind of sounds cool a little bit. Like thinking about him saying that exact line in like The Dark Knight Rises, I would have laughed my ass off. <laughs> like in the theater, would have like lost my mind. Because in, like, The Dark Knight Rises, he sounds like he's chain-smoking. <laughs> Can't wait to get there. <laughs> it's not even a Batman voice anymore. It's, it's just it's just Christian Bale. After hey, uh, Puffin. Listen, listen here, man. I'm vengeance, okay? <laughs> that's, that's it, basically. That's it. It's so bad. Like, I don't know how that voice gets worse with every movie, but it does. Like, uh, even, like, Affleck's Batman voice is better. <laughs> oh, that's, we, we, yeah. still, uh, we still don't know much about the... Uh... Pattinson's Batman voice, but we'll see. Yeah, I think in the first trailer it didn't sound that great, but in the newer stuff it sounds better. But we also haven't heard like a lot of it, so here's hoping. I mean, it, I, yeah, I think the movie's almost three hours long, so yeah, like here's hoping. <laughs> and maybe maybe he's Bruce Wayne for like two and a half of those three hours. He only puts on the cowl for ten minutes. Wait, what? What was that joke you said? It was a. Uh... It was it, the movie's only five minutes. All it's just I am vengeance, and it's uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Two and a half it's hours. just I'm vengeance, and the rest of it is credits. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all I need. I just need to say I am vengeance. I have the night. I am Batman, and then it's credits. I'm sold. Uh, five out of five instantly. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh let me let me join the conversation here. Uh, <laughs> see, I want to I want to I want to give. Uh, I want to give my my opinion on Christian Bale as as Bruce Wayne Bat or Batman. You know, oh, yeah, sure. We didn't really we didn't really do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we, start that one. Yeah, we we could we could go with uh, the cast here. So so Christian Bale is Batman. Now Batman's an interesting character for me. I don't know if everyone else feels the same way, uh, but it's like let let's 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 say let let's do a little exercise here. I want you to picture Captain America. I want you to picture Spider Man. I want you to picture like. Iron Man. You can you can picture a voice and a face. But when you picture Batman, I I cannot picture a face. I could only picture a voice. So no actor really sells me as Batman until I get used to one. But they change the actor so many times that I can't get used to one actor for Batman. So Christian Bale as Batman is so far my favorite. Not but it, it's the voice, you know? You have to nail the voice for it to be Batman in my head. Yeah. I don't know if everyone I, else I, is like that. I, I agree. And and for, for me, like, the definitive Batman is um, Kevin Conroy, who is just a voice. He's he's Batman in 
uh, Batman the Animated Series. Right. And 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 most of the Arkham trilogy, <laughs> as well as some other things. <laughs> I say most because they replaced him for Origins and just Origins for some reason. That is weird. They brought him back for Knight, but then Origins yeah. was... Yeah, yeah, they just replaced him in Origins. That's so weird. What about the VR game? Is he like... I think he's still he's still Batman in the VR game. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyways, not a video game podcast. <laughs> I think Christian Bale does a pretty good Batman voice, and he's a good Bruce Wayne. He makes this movie really makes me want to watch Gotham. I've had friends tell me to watch Gotham for years, and I keep saying I'm I'm gonna watch it, and then I never do. Gotham's good. I I actually like. I have issues with it overall, especially the later seasons. But uh, generally, I think I think Gotham's pretty good. And honestly, like, do you care if I spoil? very obvious things in gotham uh if it's super obvious then no i don't care it's super obvious it's like like when the show premiered they, they outright said this oh, okay yeah so like obviously gotham is a, it's a prequel obviously the show ends with him becoming batman we don't actually see him become like as batman for much this was like straight up said in, in when the show premiered like that um the finale would be him becoming batman and then they kept true to that and i think gotham like in the tonally it, it doesn't connect to this movie but i think tonally if gotham was a prequel to this movie i would believe it okay that's not what happens but i think like if you just told me like yeah this is just a prequel to gotham uh this is a prequel to the dark to like the dark Knight trilogy i'm like yeah that, that i believe it i think in terms of tone they, they fit super well um i think as interpretations of these characters gotham fits these movies the best out of anything Maybe these movies were the inspiration for how they portrayed these characters, but generally, I think I think Gotham and these movies pair very well together. Speaking of like tone, like the the mo- this movie's tone is great. Like I lo- I love dark movies, and uh, th- this is where Christopher Nolan really shines. Like where you could really tell that this is a Christopher Nolan film because he doesn't do many dark films. This this is a this is a great one. The the tone the tone has done all, almost perfectly because there's one character that really fucking takes you out of it, uh, and it's Scarecrow. <laughs> I don't like Sca- I don't like Scarecrow in general. I like I love Scarecrow. Um, I hate him in the Arkham games. I don't like him in Gotham. I don't like him in the comics. <laughs> like I've but and I don't like him here. <laughs> but I think his actor does a great job. I just, I just don't like his inclusion. But otherwise, yeah, I think the tone here is 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 really good. It it's like. The perfect level of like darkness and light for a Batman story. Yeah, because like for for me, I always hated when, especially that's why I don't like the DCEU interpretation of Batman. When it's like when he's too he's too dark and brooding. Like I know, but it's Batman. He's supposed to be a dark and brooding character. But what I like about Kevin Conroy's Batman is like he he does that like serious dark edginess, but he also like cracks a one liner. I I really liked I really liked that. And I think this movie. And the rest of the trilogy does that really well, like like at uh, the house party scene when when Alfred is like, um, "Oh, your guests are here! Like, you can't just leave." And Bruce is like, "I'll tell that one joke, you know," and like leaves. <laughs> like I just thought that was like really funny. Like like yeah. it, it's like like Batman is such is so good with like just dry humor, and I think these this trilogy, but especially this movie, does it really well. Like you need it because if Batman's just brooding and mopey all the time, you you don't want to watch him. <laughs> like he's not fun to watch. Yeah. So like these these little these little jokes are, are 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 great. They go a long way. And like Scarecrow, who I wish wasn't in this movie, <laughs> and I completely <laughs> forgot was in the third one. We watched this movie together and like with some other friends. And someone had to remind me that Scarecrow came back because I completely forgot he was in Rises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of that, someone I guess we should give him a shout out. Uh, it's a, that that was Dante. Uh, he's got a uh, YouTube channel, Dante Del Torto, uh, and. The reason why I bring him up is because uh, this is his words. He said that this is the best Batman movie. I, I again, I haven't seen all of them, so I don't know yet. But Dante, if you're if you're li- if you're listening to this, I, I all I did was watch this one, and I do not agree. <laughs> I don't agree, but this one's pretty good. It it it, it is very good. Uh, but going back to the cast, yeah, I didn't say what I thought about Chris Tristan Bale, but I'll, I'll go through it quickly because I, I did kind of like hint it. I like dropped little little one lines here and there. I think Bale's pretty good. Um, I think he does a great Bruce Wayne. I think his Batman's pretty good. I think he's best as Batman in this movie. Um, but yeah, uh, I think he's I think he's a good actor. Uh, but he's not Kevin Conroy. 
<laughs> but uh, we have a more important actor coming up that is um, much better. Yeah, so uh, Sir Michael Caine is up next. He plays uh, Alfred. He plays Alfred, and uh, he's be- the best, best Alfred. Alfred. Best Alfred. I mean, come on. He- he's funny. He's he's fucking sexy. <laughs> he's sexy. He's he's funny. He's charming. He has he has the best relationship with Bruce. I think I would I would sit in a room with just me and Michael Caine and let him speak to me about his life story for all eternity. I love his voice. I love him. He's he's such a great actor. I would die for this man. Yeah, he's he's really really good here. Like I, I genuinely love his portrayal as Alfred. I'm excited to see Andy Serkis as Alfred in the next movie. But like when I close my eyes and I think about Alfred, it's it's this one. It's Michael Caine. Yeah, for sure. I I, lo- I love him so much. I love his voice. God damn, I love he his has, voice. <laughs> he has that perfect blend of like I need to be like serious and I have to be like but I'm also his like a guardian. Cuz like that's the thing is 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 Alfred might be his butler and he might be his like guy in the chair when he's Batman. But at the end of the day, like Alfred is his his dad. Yeah, you know? he raised him. Yeah, and I and I think Michael Caine, um, especially like over the course of this trilogy, really shows um that caring parental figure that I don't think any other Alfred in these in movies anyway has has gotten. Um, I like Andy Circus is weird. And actually, I, I I love Alfred in Gotham too. That's another. Yeah, I was about, I was about to I was about to ask who plays Alfred in Gotham. I don't remember the actor's name, but he's fantastic. Okay. Um, and, and like uh, Andy Serkis gives me a similar vibe to Gotham's Alfred, where like he's gonna be more of a a hard ass than a soft parental figure, which is fine. Like that that's okay too. But I I, I know I like Michael Keane a lot. I want to give him a hug. Whenever he's on screen, I just want to give him a hug. Okay, I looked it up. His name is a uh, Sean Sean Pertwee. That's Alfred in uh, in Gotham. He, yeah. He's uh, he's really good. Speaking uh, and uh, speaking with uh, speaking of people with amazing voices, not only do you have Sir Michael Caine in this film, we <laughs> Morgan Freeman is here too. <laughs> yeah, Morgan Freeman plays uh, Lucius, and he's he's great. I, I love his banter with Bruce. I, I think he and and uh, Christian Bale have great chemistry. They're so good together. I'm happy he he stays for the whole trilogy. Morgan Freeman is one of my favorite actors, like in general. Uh, my favorite movie of his, who actually you know, I was about to say Seven, but I, then I remembered he was in the Shawshank Redemption. That's a, it's like a tie between those two. Yeah, Seven is my favorite movie he's in, but um, this is really good. We should do the we should do the Shawshank Redemption. For- we, could. we could. We should do Seven too. We should just do lots of good movies. <laughs> <laughs> we should stop doing uh, stupid comic book movies, and we should do cinema. We should do fine fine art films. <laughs> What what what's his character's name again? Forgot. Uh, oh. Lucius Fox. Lucius Fox. Lucius Fox. Okay, I'm gonna call yeah, him. Yeah, he's Fox. he's great. He's great. He's he's fun. He has good banter with Bruce. I like his little redemption arc with this big CEO man. I don't remember the name of. Yeah. Um, it, it's really cute. I like it a lot. He's he's a. Um, I would also die for this man. <laughs> same. Um, I'm gonna skip over one character because I want to do him last. Yeah. Um, but so we'll do Gary Oldman next. Uh, Gary Oldman is in this movie. I love Gary Oldman. He plays uh, Jim Gordon, one of my favorite Batman characters. And right, I, I wasn't him. I wasn't planning on talking about Gary Oldman, but <laughs> uh, Gary Oldman's great. So Gary Oldman plays a character named named Warden in Rainbow Six Siege. He has the ability to see through smoke. <laughs> With his cool glasses and his watch. Okay, uh, enough with the jokes. Uh, yeah, so he plays Jim Gordon, like Pat said. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Warden looks exactly like Jim Gordon. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I just had to like, throw in that inside joke. Like it's clearly intentional, right? Like it has to be. <laughs> I think he's he's meant to be like a James Bond type character, but yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, I like Jim Gordon. Uh, he's cool. Was yeah, he like in? Was he in Tim Burton Batman? Yes, he's okay, a, he's in yeah. every Batman. Okay, I don't remember it's just, him. <laughs> yeah, his his importance in '89 is is a lot like smaller, um, but he's in it. Yeah, he's just a cop in '89. Yeah, here in the in this movie, and I'm sure in this whole trilogy, they're gonna have a bromance going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This movie really popularized the 
uh, the um, Jim and Batman working together thing. Like, it was in the comics. Like, it was always in the comics. But in, like, big adaptations, we never really got to see it until this movie. And it became, like, a mainstay. You know, J.K. Simmons does it for the DCEU. He's in the Batman. He's in the Arkham games. Like, he's just, like their dynamic is really important to the Batman mythos. And this movie really popularized it. Well, wait, J.K. JK Simmons is Gordon in the, in the DC universe? Yep. Oh, shit. Yep. Uh, yep, I don't like him as Jim Gordon, he if needs, I'm being perfectly honest. He needs pictures of Batman. <laughs> he needs he needs pictures of Batman and the Spider-Man. <laughs> There's your Spider-Man he's, reference. He's getting he's getting pictures of everybody. And he needs he needs to be on your tempo. Yes. There's your La La Land and the Whiplash reference. And then he's gonna fire you for not playing the set playlist. Fuck. I, I, I don't I don't like him as Jim, but maybe if we ever cover those movies, which I don't want to, but if we do, we'll talk about it then. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to either. I mean, we if if of all of that, the only movie we might do is the Snyder Cut. But maybe still. Yeah, he's in the Snyder Cut, so if we ever do the Snyder Cut, we could talk about him then. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was saying. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't want to do that either. But we'll see. Uh, all right, moving on. Oh, okay. We did. We did all. Okay, we did all the 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 good characters. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to pay special mention to uh, Ken Watanabe. Uh, he's not in the movie much. He's used as a a tw- a twist, not main villain. Uh, but he's really good. I love Ken Watanabe. I'm, I'm happy he's here. He he plays a pretty good uh, Razagol, but he's not the real Raz. The real one is played by. The goat, Liam Neeson. All right, let's get to the let's get to the bad guys. <laughs> what do you think about uh, Raz in this movie, Lib? I have no fucking clue who Raz Al Ghul is. I had to do some research before watching the movie. Uh, didn't figure it out, but <laughs> uh, he's basically an immortal guy who is the head of the League of Assassins. Can you please explain the League of Assassins? <laughs> uh, the League of Assassins are the League of Shadows in this movie because assassin's a naughty word. Okay. They're basically just a a, a league of ninjas or super ninjas, I should say. I I see. That that dictate the flow of history. Whenever humanity is going awry, they get involved, and whenever they 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 feel they they need to write the course of history, they kill everybody. That sounds pretty cool. They are a, a group of people who have been amongst humanity for thousands of years. And Roz is basically immortal because of a pit of water that he takes a sip of or bathes in. So he's That's like... not referenced in this movie at all. I don't think the Lazarus Pit, the Lazarus Pit ever comes up. All right. That's some comic book shit, so, uh... <laughs> it's in the Arkham series if you get that far into the game. Which, which I've only played... Fucking asylum, and he's I didn't finish it. He's in all of them cool. except Origins. <laughs> Why is Origins the standout? Okay, anyways, I'm pretty sure Origins was made by a di- like, like it's made by a different studio or a different team. No, it's it was still <laughs> Rocksteady. I think it was a different. It, it might be a different team, maybe. Origins is weird. It's a weird game. It's weird because uh, because for some reason, whenever whenever you whenever uh steam or anywhere anywhere like try sells the arkham games as a bundle it's always either missing origins or it's all of them except asylum it's weird okay but anyways not again not a video game podcast not a video game podcast. <laughs> yeah I, I like him as raz a lot more personally yeah so i i liked him as a uh, raz al ghul he was pretty cool ow ow my ears ringing <laughs> Ooh, unfortunate. Ow. What is your fuck? ear ringing and you hear the sound of a bat? Uh, no. Did I mention that Bruce is afraid of bats? <laughs> Wait, are we keeping this That's... in? <laughs> yes, we are. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can cut it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Okay, we're good. Okay. I like Neum. Neum? <laughs> I like Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul. He's, he's a pretty cool villain, but... He, he doesn't have a huge presence in the film because you see him like in the in the intro. Yeah, you you see him in the intro when when there's the whole uh, the martial arts training going on, and uh, him and Bruce actually get along then. But then but then Bruce is like, oh no, he's bad. <laughs> Near the end. Well, 
It's not that he's bad. It's that they just uh, Bruce is a little baby and doesn't want to kill people. <laughs> and I'm gonna be real. I love Batman. And I like that he sticks by his no kill rule. But he'd be helping a lot of people if he gets killed as criminals. <laughs> and uh, the fi- the final battle uh, is really cool. Actually, it's done pretty well. Yep, my second favorite train scene in a, in a movie, a superhero movie. Second favorite train. C- What's your first? Spider Man Two. Oh oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Who saw that coming? <laughs> not me. <laughs> yeah, clearly not you. Yeah, I think I think his dynamic with Bruce is, is really good. Um he, he operates in the shadows, haha, League of, League of Shadows. Um for the most part. Raz was never like a super imposing villain, even in the comics. He he does have a physical presence, like he does challenge Bruce physically in this movie and in the comics. But he is very much more of a like a ringleader. Of like of his group of ninjas more than he is a, a physical fighter. Like he's not Bane, you know. He come back. Uh, he comes back and he has he has a cameo in in um in Rises. Oh okay. And he's referenced in the Dark Knight, but he doesn't physically come back. Okay, all right. Should we move on to the next antagonist? Scarecrow is this, boring. I don't like this. This is the one I have a lot to say about. <laughs> I'll I'll let you take the lead. Okay, coming from the games, I really like Scarecrow. Okay, like he's I really like villains that break the fourth wall in in games specifically. I think one of the best ones that do this and I think uh Pat Pat's going to agree with me on this was Psycho Mantis in uh, Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid. Really cool villain cuz he would like fuck with you and like read your your memory card and whatever. And Scarecrow did something similar in uh in I think it was uh Arkham, Arkham si- Asylum yeah where he would like make you think your save file got deleted he would change the volume of your TV or well, you would think like he'd put it lower and then you go what the fuck and you put the volume higher and then he fucking jump scares you it's he was such a cool villain his fight was boring but <laughs> <laughs> like scarecrow is not like a a fight villain yeah he's, right? he's he's a psychological villain he gets into batman's brain and that kind of happens in the movie but i i think in the movie he was kind of disappointing because i not not a not a problem with cillian murphy i think his performance was outstanding it's just they didn't really do much with scarecrow like you know what i mean what's his name uh jonathan crane that's his name they they focused a lot on like crane and scarecrow's you know like like you said scarecrow's shtick is not really having a huge presence but he had barely any presence in this film, and he was defeated very easily. His tra- crane shtick in this movie is he's basically building an army of crazed inmates for for Rosh, for Riz, Rish. Uh, he's building an army for Rish, and he's building, like, um, not slaves, I don't want to say slaves, <laughs> but... Um, puppets? Like, like puppets to, like, mass-produce that, that shit they put in the water, <laughs> which we, we have not mentioned. To turn the frogs <laughs> um, gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the frogs gay. Yeah, Ra- Raz, Raz's a whole um, plot in this movie, like his whole evil villain plan. Like he wants to destroy Gotham by pumping a bunch of um, scarecrow juice <laughs> into the water. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it scarecrow juice because it's better than fear toxin. <laughs> it was like we're gonna pump the scarecrow juice into the into the water supply of the of the city, like into the pipes. And then Roz is going to use this EMP steam water disperser on Gotham, which will disperse all the water into the air, and then everyone's going to go crazy with, with fear juice and and kill each other. And if that doesn't work, Roz is just going to blow up the city. <laughs> um, That's his evil plan. And and Crane is, like, getting people to mass-produce the, the juice and to put it into the water. That That's their whole shtick. So, like, I, I think, like, he does a good job at, like... Like, he interacts with Carmine Falcone, who isn't in this movie much. Oh, yeah, Falcone. Or Falcone. Oh, yeah. They call him Falcone in this. Hey, hey, people making movies. Us spaghettis, it's pronounced Falcone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the mask looks cool. Like, the, the Scarecrow mask itself. It's just, I, I don't I don't like um Crane. Like, like his look. And I guess that's the point. It's like you lure people in with a false sense of security. Like, oh, this guy looks like skinny and lanky and I could probably beat him up. But I can't take him serious 
when it looks like I could punch him in the face and he'd cry. I, that's that's the point, I, th- I think, anyway. But it just doesn't work for me. I also just, I'm really biased and I hate Scarecrow because he scared me in Arkham Knight. And I'm never forgiving that character. <laughs> I don't do jump scare as well. And that game has a big jump scare at the beginning of the fucking game. All the, wait, is it, are you talking about the one on the boat? No, at the, in the restaurant. Like, literally oh. at the start of the game. The fr- you, oh, you boot the game and it's a jump scare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, so, wait, do, do you know about the man bat jump scare in that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Arkham series has jump scares and I hate it. Yeah, for I pe- love Arkham City. For people, for people who don't know, if you play the game on, uh, on Halloween, you'll get a man bat jump scare. <laughs> I don't like games that are hurt my feelings. <laughs> I guess we, we should we should talk about like the ending because we didn't even mention the ending. <laughs> Batman fucking kills Rache, dude. Yeah, he, he fucking murders him. Cold blood. Oh but, yeah, but you know he does he doesn't kill him. The train falling off the tracks kills him. Yeah, no, yeah, Batman, yeah, yeah. Batman didn't kill him. He just didn't save him. <laughs> That's how Bruce Wayne sleeps at night. This is why it's not four stars for me. It's the ending. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Batman, everyone knows Batman's no-kill rule. He has a no-kill rule. He doesn't want to become his villains. And I think that's very admirable. Except when <laughs> he just lets people die. Because that's not better, Bruce. <laughs> like, you don't have the moral high ground when you could have saved your villain and you didn't. You might as well have just killed him. I think you need to. I think you need to go to ethics training, Batman. Yeah, and on that note, comic book Batman, please <laughs> just kill the Joker. <laughs> it's been like seventy years. <laughs> just kill him. <laughs> oh my god! Sup- Injustice Superman had it right. Just a fist through the chest. <laughs> Yeah, so th- I-, I like the ending. I like the whole, like, race to the finish. Like, what's going to happen? Is is the water going to get dispersed and the machine go off? Or is um is Batman going to stop the train from, from hitting Wayne Tower? Because Wayne Tower is, like, the center of Gotham in this universe. Yeah, and th- that, like, all the wa- the water supplies in Wayne Tower. The, yeah. The, there's, like, yeah. filtration systems so, in Wayne Tower. Yeah, so the plan is run train into building, uh, machine go off, boom, steam... Uh, makes everyone die. <laughs> um, so like it, it's a really cool race to the finish. I think this one is better than the one in Rises. I think Rises is like like climax is a little lame <laughs> in comparison to this one. But generally, I think it's really cool. I like watching Batman fight and like just like with his fist in this one. He's more of a brawler than he is in the other movies. He doesn't have all the the crazy toys. And that's why I'm really, really excited for the Batman, because we're getting year, year one Batman, or year two, I guess, where he doesn't have all his gear, and you're, you're just watching this, this angry, angry man punch people. Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. What's up? The, the villain? The, the uh, Scarecrow with his, like, Scarecrow juice? Yeah. Uh, Kingsman Secret Service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what was going to happen. Kingsman been, stole Kingsman. it. Kingsman stole the idea. Holy shit. <laughs> Kingsman officially not cinema. Kingsman officially uh is is plagiarism. <laughs> uh no, you know, mo- movies movies are always similar. Yeah. What what don't you like about this ending? Is it just the fact that he doesn't kill Ross himself? I don't know. It's just uh well, I I the part the part I don't like is everything after uh the climactic showdown cuz a- everything slows down to a halt pretty much and the the setup for the sequel is pretty cool, but his like Bruce's scene with Rachel was dumb. Yeah, it's forced. It is forced. I like, like I I get the intention. It's like oh well, we can't be together because because of the mask. Like like you're always gonna prioritize being Batman over me. So like I, I get the point you were going for. And like Raimi Spider Man did the same thing, but yeah. better. I just <laughs> I don't think this was the time or place for it. I, like, like it's sequel bait, right? Because they're going to meet again in the second one, except it's going to be Joan Hall instead. <laughs> and, and there's going to be that, like, um, that bickering back and forth, like, the tension. And also, she knows his secret. So, like, like she's in danger, quote-unquote, which is a stupid trope, and I hate it. <laughs> but, like, that's a separate conversation. I think, yeah, I think damsel distress is my least favorite cliche. In no, no, not, 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 dam- not damsel in distress. I just don't like the uh, the secret identity trope. Oh, 
Because okay, so here's the thing with the secret identity thing, right? Like I get it, right? You're you're trying to protect your people because if bad guys figured out your identity, then your 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 loved ones are in danger, and that's true. That's fine. I agree. But like, hey, <laughs> if you tell your friends and family, they don't have to worry about you being an asshole and being flaky and ditching them all the time. Also, if anything, you going out there being Batman and then coming home to them is putting them in more danger. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I guess, it applies more to Spider-Man, than because Batman does isolate himself, that's his whole character, is he's very brooding, he's very alone. He doesn't have a personal life, unless he has to. So that's more of a Spider-Man issue. Like, Peter, you're kind of an idiot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't like, I, I think that trope is really old and outdated, and I think we should like just stop using it. I remember when I was a kid, and I was watching Iron Man for the first time, and you know we all know the ending where he says I am yeah. Iron Man to the press. I remember when yeah. I when I watched that like child like like five year old me was like, oh my god! Now everyone knows. <laughs> well, I think the MC, the MCU kind of made that popular. I don't fucking care about the MCU when I was five years old. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying like 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 superheroes revealing their identities became like more commonly accepted. Because of the MCU, yeah. like like the whole secret identity was like it's really a thing of like the, the like the sixties, the seventies, the eighties. Uh, like it's an old comic book trope that I don't really agree with anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, Rachel knows his identity, and that's gonna bring some tension in, in Dark Knight. Uh, we have that we have that sequel bait with um, the Bat Signal and the Joker card. Oh, uh, that that was good. I liked that. Yeah, this guy is a bit of a jokester. He's a bit of a joke. Wonder what he's going to be like. I can't wait to talk about Heath Ledger. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, like I said more than like I, I I knew I had a lot to say about this movie, and I've been talking a lot, but like I'm excited to talk even more about the Dark Knight. I'm probably gonna talk more about the Dark Knight. It is a uh, uh, Dark Knight is at the time of recording uh, the 18th. It is number 18 on Letterboxd's list of the best films ever made. So we'll we'll I'm excited to watch it. Uh, but with that being said, uh, that's Batman Begins. I really like this one. I think it's a really good introduction, a reintroduction to Batman. Um, yeah, if you, know, you if you haven't seen it, um, I highly recommend this trilogy. Oh yeah, um, I'm sure if I've, if you're a Batman fan, you've definitely seen this trilogy. But um, yeah, just, just go out and have some fun. Yeah, if watch you... this. Watch the Batman when it comes out. And play the Arkham games too. They're really good. Yep. Except Knight. Yeah, except Knight. <laughs> Knight, Knight, Knight. I have opinions on, but this but is not a video game podcast. But it's pretty fun uh, driving around the Thumper. <laughs> oh we didn't talk about the thumper thumper's best batmobile don't at me oh we also didn't talk about the cg the the bats are they look good everything else looks bad <laughs> yeah but the, the thumper best batmobile i want to drive it for real yeah you know we should have talked about the bats you know just real quick real quick the cg for the bats because obviously they're not real bats they look fucking fantastic okay 2005 the bats look great like that that really that 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 made me happy seeing all those bats that made me happy i like bats <laughs> but um i guess you could say that i am a like batman yeah, i guess so. and i began but the the these scarecrow nightmare scenes did not look that great no not as good as they looked like in the in arkham asylum everyone played that game <laughs> uh, yeah the arkham, arkham asylum and city are pretty good but now well, it's time to move on to hot off the presses this is the same where we talk about movie news, and boy has it been a busy week. So let's start with uh, let's 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 just start off with something juicy that I'm iffy about. So Futurama is getting revived on Hulu, and if you live in Canada, it's going to be on Disney Plus because we don't have Hulu here. Uh, <laughs> yep, this news came out uh, yesterday at the time of recording. When I heard this news, I was so angry. I can't tell you how angry I was because the ending for Futurama was perfect. Like, I, it, it, it creates a perfect loop for the last season, but they're all, they renewed one season. But here's the thing that's, that I think is making everyone angry is that they recasted Bender. Yeah, I found that out today. I heard that today that the original actor is not coming back. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it was, it's John DiMaggio who played Bender. And he's, is there a reason they, they recasted him? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't look too much into it. All I, I don't know who they re replaced him with, but I know that it's not going to be John DiMaggio. And a lot of 
fans are already rallying. There's already petitions to bring him back, as if petitions ever did anything. <laughs> but, you know, maybe they'll find a way to bring him back if they didn't already pay the actor. <laughs> yeah, they haven't actually done the, uh, the table read yet, so there's time. But yeah, Futurama coming back for one last season, and we'll see how it goes. And I, I love I love Futurama. I agree that the ending was perfect, but uh, if the survival is good, it's fine. Uh, I'll watch it. I'll enjoy it. Look, I'll be happy if the revival is good. I just don't know how they're going to pick it up because the ending created a time loop. Yep. I don't, I don't know, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a prequel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, next, um, Spider-Man No Way Home is the fourth highest grossing film in the U.S. and Canada. Sixth worldwide. Pretty cool. Uh, if you want to hear us talk about Spider-Man, we did an episode on it. I also talk about Spider-Man in every single episode. <laughs> I like Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Speaking of No Way Home, there was a cut uh, Daredevil 2003 reference in No Way Home. Pat, did you, you knew about this, right? I didn't. I found out, I, I, I found out about this when I looked at the doc. I, I didn't know about this. The reference was because in Daredevil 2003, John Favreau played Foggy. And there was going to be a reference where Favreau had a line where he was going to say, yeah, I'm a bit foggy on that while they were talking to Matt Murdock. I wish they kept that in because that would have been funny. <laughs> Something not on the dock, but it's kind of related. They announced today that all the Disney, all the Marvel Netflix shows are leaving Netflix on March 1st yeah. because the, ne the Netflix uh, license has run out and Disney has yet to announce where they'll be moving to, but they are moving somewhere. Uh, I hope not Disney+. Plus. <laughs> It's most likely going to be Disney Plus, <laughs> probably, but I can hope. But you know, but you know what that means. I need to finish Daredevil soon. <laughs> but it's also uh, up in the air on if these shows are being revived or not. Now that they're not, the license has expired, so we're gonna we're gonna have to see. But uh, yeah, that's that's some pretty sad news because I love Daredevil and I don't care about the other shows. Next we we have um today we got Super Bowl footage for the upcoming DC projects. I'm assuming we're going to get trailers this weekend at the Super Bowl, so we'll have more to say next episode. I'm sure there'll be lots of movie trailers there to talk about. Yeah, we there, we had we have some new footage for Black Adam. Is that what it's called? The Dwayne Johnson Black one? Adam, yeah. The Flash, I believe Aquaman 2, yeah. uh, The Batman. Not DC, but we got a Sonic trailer. <laughs> um, <laughs> it looks pretty good. Maybe we'll have something to say about Sonic uh, coming up. Hmm. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, it's like I'm expecting some some fun trailers this weekend. Probably nothing we don't already know about. But yeah, next week we'll have things to say. So there was a movie that's about Marilyn Monroe that is coming out that's been in production for a while that I just never heard of until today. I didn't hear about this either. Yeah, Anna de Armas is uh, playing the titular character, and it is going to be PG thirteen. Now that is weird to me. Because if you're making a movie about Marilyn Monroe, it should be rated R. Because if you know anything about Marilyn Monroe, if you want to make like an accurate biography, is that what they're called? Whatever. If you want to make a non accurate nonfiction film about Marilyn Monroe, it should be rated R. Just saying. But it doesn't mean it's going to be bad. I can't wait for it. Uh, I didn't know it existed. And now I do. So now I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know this was a thing until I read the doc. I'll probably watch it. I can't say I'm excited, but I'll give it a watch. Come on, Santa de Armas. I, I love her. This and this is officially an Anna de Armas uh, simp podcast. <laughs> next, we have um, the Uncharted movie is screening. It comes out next week, right? Officially. Uh, I think so. Yes. I might go see it. That's all I'm gonna say. Apparently, it bombed. I wasn't expecting it to be good to begin with, but I'll probably go see it. Yeah. Uh, the thing that critics are. Crashing mostly is actually Tom Holland's performance. Look, I, I I love Tom Holland. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think he I, he he has not sold me on Drake. Uh, I don't think he ever will. Well, I guess we'll have to wait until the film comes out. Yeah, I, I'm. I'll have more to say maybe. Actually, not even next week. It'll probably be in two weeks because I I would have to see it on. I would see it after we record the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll talk about Uncharted at some point maybe. I'm sure Lib will have a lot to say when he sees it. It will uh, most likely do an episode on yeah. it. Yeah, he's played the games. Uh, I haven't. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going in strictly as a movie guy. He's going in as a fan. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Back and forth, maybe. Unless it's that bad. And now we both have nothing to say. 
that's like what that's like with the Batman. He's going in as a fan. I'm going in as a movie guy. So oh, I can't wait for the Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a bit of Star Wars news. So The Book of Boba Fett, the last episode aired this Wednesday at the time of recording. I have a lot of things to say about The Book of Boba Fett. I don't I don't want to say too much just in case we do end up doing an episode when Pat eventually watches it. Yeah, I, I actually want to, talk about, I want to talk to you about that off camera. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything right now. But we may or may not do The Book of Boba Fett at some point. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Following that, we got some exciting news about the next Disney Plus Star Wars show, which is the long-awaited Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which is premiering very soon on May 25th. And I'm so happy, and I can't wait. We talked about the cast. The cast got revealed not too long ago. Christensen got confirmed to be coming back recently. It's... Oh my god, I can't wait for this. can't wait for this. This is gonna be so good. Please don't be bad. Please. I was super excited for the book of Boba Fett. And we know what happened. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real. It's not really a hot take. Uh, I think generally people seem to agree on this. Um, Disney Plus shows in general have not been working for me. There's only two that I really, really liked. Those being The Mandalorian and WandaVision. I, I think the sub-10 episodes format doesn't work for these shows. I think a, a consistent problem with all the Disney Plus shows is they're not given enough time to brew. And and I really hope this one blows me away, but I am not hopeful. <laughs> um, I think, I'm going to be real, I think The Mandalorian was a fluke. That show is amazing, it's never going to happen again. It's like, it's like Daredevil on Netflix. <laughs> like, that show is so good, it was so good, and it never, it's never going to happen again. Which is sad, because like, w- with um, Spider-Man freshman year uh being animated and everything you'd think they'd have more than eight episodes but no that's still only going to be like a like a sub 10 episode series yeah i I don't i don't think sub 10 is is optimal i know we don't need like 20 episode seasons like netflix shows but all i'm saying is those shows are like daredevil specifically is great because it had time to tell a story the way i wanted it to eight 50 minute episodes is not as going to be as good as like 12 50 minute episodes or 40 minute episodes it's just, you need that time to really tell your story especially because these aren't movies like take advantage of the medium you're you're producing for and the disney just isn't doing it and it's, it's a lot of shows are flopping because of it lastly on our, our hot off the presses list so like we joked about last time or i guess for you guys listening it's gonna be a couple a couple times ago <laughs> we did our Oscar prediction episode and we said in that episode where um, by the time that episode goes up, we'll have the nominations. Well, that was almost true. <laughs> so I think like two days after we put up our episode, uh, the Oscar nominations are out. Perfect timing, really. Yeah, um, we 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 were almost c- cucked. <laughs> <laughs> so like we we didn't. Yeah. yeah and so so far, that's our uh, that's a that that episode's been doing pretty well. Thank you everybody for listening. Like, honestly, thank you very much. If you want to hear our thoughts on the nominations. Uh, we put out a little bonus episode. My brain farted. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say? <laughs> yeah, you can say it. My brain just, my brain just like died. Like I just blue screened. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So we put out a little like short, fifteen to twenty minute bonus episode. Hasn't been recorded yet, but uh, <laughs> it'll come out before this episode comes out. But yeah, just a little bonus episode for you guys if you were interested in our. Thoughts on the Oscar nominations? Just gonna be a short little episode where we, like, a little bonus episode where we uh, discuss the nominations, and then obviously, once the once the Oscars do happen, we're gonna have a n- nice long, probably two hour long special. <laughs> yep, we'll be going through each nomination individually. We'll talk about the show because I believe they confirmed this year has a host again. Yeah. Uh, don't quote me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so I'm sure there'll be plenty of Ellen DeGeneres tier jokes to talk <laughs> about. That'll be really fun. I look forward to the Oscars. Uh, we'll see you then. Yeah, so uh, make sure to check out that bonus episode. It's up right now. Other than that, that's it for Hot Off the Presses. So it's time to uh, move along to our last segment, Backlogged. This is the segment where we recommend each other movies to watch and then talk about it on the next episode of the podcast. Uh, last week, uh, Lib recommended me a, a movie I wanted to watch sooner. Like, I planned on watching this eventually. I just never... I don't want to say I didn't have the time, 
never had the motivation to sit down and watch it. It's Encanto, the the late 2021 Disney film made on Disney Plus. I believe it got a theatrical release. Yes, it did. Our theaters were closed during that time. I think it got like a couple of weeks before our theaters closed over here. Yeah, actually, uh, one one of our one of our buddies was able to watch it in theaters before they closed. Yep. But yeah, it also premiered on Disney Plus. I believe same day. I finally watched it. I thought it was fine. I liked it. I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum where I think this is the second best 3D Disney movie ever made. I gave it four yeah. and a half stars. <laughs> I am nowhere near that on that spectrum. I I enjoyed it. I okay, so like something we talked about. I don't remember if we talked about this on camera or if it was just like on Discord. I really like that this movie doesn't ha- it doesn't follow the traditional Disney formula with like this big villain, and the characters have to have this big overarching story with the villain. They have to overcome this big evil. Um, and Kanto really is a a personal story about this family, and, and what they're trying to overcome is like themselves basically, like themselves and each other. Yeah, it's it's a uh, uh, if you if you've ever taken a creative writing class. You learn about the like structures of writing. This is a very man versus self movie. Uh, if anyone here knows what I'm saying, <laughs> um, I, I like that. I, I thought it was very different for Disney because uh, Disney always has that 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 villain they have to overcome. Um, but I thought this was really cute. I like the character designs a lot. Um, the powers. I, I like that the power dynamic. I really thought that in the end. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Power dynamic means something else. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah but we're keeping it in i like the power like the utility with everyone having powers except <laughs> except the main character who I, I i thought would get powers in the end because that's a trope um but they did it and i'm kind of happy they didn't yeah the, the this movie breaks a lot of disney tropes uh the major one being that the main character's parents are alive and well <laughs> And they, nothing bad happens to them. Yeah, actually, well, except uh, the mother loses her powers, but, you know. <laughs> nothing bad happens. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Because the movie is about learning to live as your best self with or without powers, right? Yeah. So, and I think that's a cute message. Uh, I, I finally understand the meme that we don't talk about Bruno. Yay. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about Bruno. Yeah, we don't talk about him, so we're not going to. So I, I like the songs for the most part. Our buddy who saw the movie in theaters uh, had told me that he thought there were too many songs. I thought so as well. And I, and I, I think I agree. Yeah, I think there's too many songs. But I think like mo- for the most part they're fine. I, I don't really have a favorite, and and I, I kind of want to give the the soundtrack a re-listen so I can properly absorb them. But yeah, I think for Disney songs they're pretty okay. Uh, they don't they don't fall under like in the same category as like Moana songs or, or um, Coco songs for me. But generally, they're they're pretty good. And gen- this movie overall for me doesn't compete with like Moana or or Coco. Um, but I liked it. I thought it was fine. Co- Coco's Pixar. It's Disney. It's the same boat. Yeah, but when it, when I talk when I mean like three D Disney movies, I mean Moana, Tangled, Wreck It Ralph. That's what yeah, I, mean. I guess. I think I'd, I think I'd put like Tangled and, and and Moana above this. Tangled is just really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like Tangled. Not. Yeah, not Frozen and Frozen 2, though, but yeah, I think this is pretty fine. I yeah. enjoyed this. Actually, speaking of Frozen and Frozen 2, we don't talk about Bruno, uh, topped the number one charts in the US, which, unlike Let It Go, only made it up to number five. So, we don't talk about Bruno is bigger than Let It Go, somehow. I, I still don't get how. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I don't have anything else to say about Encounter, really. Well, I guess it's time for you to recommend me a movie, then. You see, Lib, when we, when we, because usually before we record, we kind of sit in a call for like 20 minutes and just, just chit chat. And, um, you called me a weeb. Oh, fuck. And I took that, and I took that <laughs> Oh, shit! No! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm recommending you a, 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 it's the first movie on your watch list. Yeah, I know what you're about. talking about. It's Spirited yeah. Away. <laughs> you're watching, you're watching Spirited Away. <laughs> um, honestly, I, I like it kind of, it's kind of weird to me that you haven't seen this movie. I think like everybody who's at least a little bit interested in movies has seen Spirited Away. But uh, yeah, you're going to watch Spirited Away because I took you calling me a weeb very personally. You hurt my feelings. I put that on my watch list accidentally because I knew if I put it on there, I'd be, he'd be, I'd be like, oh my gosh, the Pat's going to fucking recommend it. I was on the Metro and my finger fucking slipped. <laughs> uh, I guess not. You're watching Spirited Away. Damn it. Well, I mean, okay, it did win Best Animated Picture. 
And it's the only anime that ever won Best Animated Picture. It's really fucking good. You could choose to watch it subbed or dubbed. I, I don't care. Yeah, no, no, you have to pick for me. Which one do I watch? Which one's better? I, I've seen both. I like both. Uh, whatever. Whatever you prefer. You'd probably like it dubbed. You'd probably watch it dubbed more. Uh, just because you're not an anime guy. So you could watch it dubbed. But personally, I, I don't care. I mean, I mean, pro- the, our, our community is probably going to yell at me for watching it dubbed. But hey. <laughs> Nah, but like, no, no, it's, Ghibli movies are fine dubbed. I, I don't think. I don't think. Are they professionally movie. dubbed? Like, right? They're. Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay, good, good. <laughs> it's not like it's not like a. Uh, this is the this is gonna be the second anime that we ever talk about on the podcast. First time I recommended the, uh, at, Professor Layton, the Eternal Diva, which was only semi professionally dubbed, uh, because the the only the only two returning actors were for Layton and Luke in that film. Yeah. This is professionally dubbed. And it's a really solid movie. I hope you enjoy it. You know, I, I actually can't wait to watch it. Like, I, 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 needed, I needed an excuse. And now I do. Uh, but with that being said, that's going to be it for today's episode. It was a good Batman-filled time. If you liked this episode, you should check out the other ones. Uh, and you should definitely check out our bonus episode talking about the Oscar nominations. Because I'm really excited to talk about all that shit. Let's see if the Academy... Really did it this time. <laughs> but you can find all our episodes and our socials on our link tree, which is linktr.ee slash fresh underscore off underscore the underscore real. Or you could just go on YouTube and type fresh off the real and go in the description and you'll find everything you need. In our link tree, you'll also find our letterbox accounts that you could follow and you'll get podcast spoilers. Whoa. Yep. And on the link tree, you can fill out a form uh, to recommend us a film or a TV show. We'll watch that. We'll watch your recommendation. And then uh, we'll do an episode on it. Uh, we love seeing your recommendations. And we got we got one coming up real soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Until next time, we'll see you at a theater near you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Insert blooper here. <laughs> I liked the songs for the most part. Uh, our buddy who saw the movie in theaters told me that he, he Jesus. didn't. Oh, oh hello. Ooh, God Apple damn ringtone. it. Oh, hello. Honey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yo, can I have? Yo, can I have a sandwich? <laughs> I want. I want a. I want a smoked meat sandwich. Oh uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, the, 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 they have the one called the Star. That's the one Daddy's getting, right? Yeah, I want that. Yeah, give me the same one he's getting. Can you get me one too? <laughs> All right, I'll see you later then. Bye. That's a that's a podcast first. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a blooper reel material. <laughs>